Hello, Peter Canego here. Thank you so much once again for joining me at Midship Cinema. Today, I'm very happy to announce a new playlist called Sailing Day, which covers ships in a particular port on a particular day during my 30 years of videotaping cruise ships. Uh, I'm gonna start with the very first time I used a video camera with a little help from a friend in Miami in July of 1992, with four very interesting ships that I hope make up for the quality of the video footage. Thanks again. After years of procrastinating, I had finally bought a video camera for this trip, which would feature a five-night cruise aboard the historic SS Britannis. This was the morning view on July 24, 1992 from our hotel, the Biscayne Bay Marriott. It was a hot and humid Friday, and despite being low season in the height of summer, there were four cruise ships lined up at Dodge Island. For perspective, George H.W. Bush was president, John Major was the UK Prime Minister, Sir mix lots Baby Got Back was the number one song in the US, and A League of Their Own and Batman Returns were box office hits. Early that afternoon, we headed to South Point Park on the north side of Miami's government cut to capture the day's departures. Chandra's fantasy cruises Britannus led the pack of cruise ships, all headed to the Bahamas for the weekend. Even back then, her majestic profile with its near-vertical bow, twin funnels, and cruiser stern was a cherished anachronism. In her 61st year of service, this immaculate ship was now offering budget cruises that barely cost more than staying at home. She was built for Matson Line's South Pacific run in 1931 as the Monterey, and after heroic trooping duties in World War II, sailed on as the Matsonia and Lurleen. In 1970, when most ships of her era had long since retired, she was sold to Chandris, who renamed her Britannis for UK to Australia emigrant voyages and full-time cruising after 1975. You can find out much more about this remarkable ship by checking out the Floating Paradise Lost playlist on this channel. Next in line was another budget classic with a devoted following. Despite being only 9,000 gross tons, Dolphin Cruise Line's Dolphin 4 carried up to 780 passengers. This informal ship, which was built in 1956 as the Zion for Zim Lines, was rebuilt for cruising in 1972. The hard-working Dolphin, known for great food and friendly service, was sold to Port Canaveral Cruises in 1995 and kept sailing until 2000. She was scrapped in India in 2003. Carnival Cruise Line's Fantasy was the first in a platform of eight ships with towering atriums, pulsating neon, and wildly conceptual spaces that were every bit as amusing as the entertainment they showcased. When I shot this footage, the Fantasy was not only considered state-of-the-art, but also one of the world's largest cruise ships. As a result of the COVID shutdown, the Fantasy since renamed Carnival Fantasy was scrapped at Aliyah, Turkey in 2020. Bringing up the rear, Royal Caribbean's Nordic Empress was also considered state-of-the-art in 1992. Her more noteworthy features were a towering atrium with glass walls that faced the sea and a double-deck dining room in her stern. She is currently sailing out of India as the Empress for Cordelia Cruise Lines. Well, that pretty much wraps up Midship Cinema's first sailing day. Hope you enjoyed watching, and if so, please hit like and share. Thank you.